Library of Adventure, featuring the great adventures of yesterday, dramatized for the boys and girls of today. Michael Strogoff, Courier of the Tsar. Chapter 17 of the story adapted from the novel by Jules Verne. Sentence had been passed on Michael Strogoff, now revealed to the Emir and to Wolgarev as a Russian officer of the Tsar's Corps of Couriers. But before the sentence must be executed, Michael was forced to stand in a distant corner of the square and observe the remainder of the entertainments provided for the Emir on this occasion of the entry into Tomsk. Troops of Persian dancing girls poured into the space before the Emir's divan and quickly the instruments of the Tartar musicians took up the wild notes of the dance with guitar and flute, drum and tambourine. Richly their vestments glowed in the light of flickering torches, and as wildly and as beautifully as any danced the traitor's evil spy Sangari. But soon the dancing was done, and all the dancers and all the musicians gone away, and now was only the tramp of soldiers' feet in the square and the muted sound of a trumpet. Michael Strogoff was brought forward. Before him stood Ogareff, and beside Ogareff stood the executioner, heating a sabre across a brazier of coals. Across the square, beyond the ranks of soldiery, Blunt and Jolivet watched the scene. Monsieur Jolivet, is there nothing we can do? See, they have brought his mother to witness her son's death. Barbarians! Wait, Mr. Blunt. Our friend is not going to be put to death. No, he's to suffer a worse fate. Worse? They are going to put out his eyes in the Tartar fashion. Great heavens. It is so. Do you see the executioner standing there beside the white-hot saber? When they have taunted the prisoner and enjoyed whatever spectacle he may provide for them, the saber will be drawn across his eyes. They will get nothing out of Michael Strogoff. No. Therefore, we shall have but a short while to watch before we witness the end. I do not wish to see it if there is nothing we can do to prevent it. Let us return to the city. I shall come with you, Mr. Blunt. My cousin Madeleine would be no more edified by a description of this scene than would the readers of your journal. Let us go. That such a man should fall as he must fall. A traitor's death. An inglorious spectacle for these Tartar butchers. Come, Mr. Blunt. You have seen the last of Michael Strogoff. A brave and very gallant gentleman. This is the end for you, Michael Strogoff. Have you anything to say? Very well. You heard the interpretation of the verse from the sacred book of the prophet. You have watched our comings and our goings. Our women have danced to delight the last moments of your eyes. And this is the end. Oh, my mother, Nadia, if I had not come to this, then you would not have come to it. But I must bear it, as I have borne all things for my God and my country. Let them do it. Quickly. Quickly. Is the saber ready? Aye, it is ready. Bring his mother forward. Let her see how we treat her son. He may wish to keep his last fond glance for her. Ivan. Ivan the traitor. The last menace of my eyes will be for you. If you will have it so. Executioner? Aye. Put out his eyes. <sighs> you are blind, thou Michael Strogoff. <laughs> now will you reach Akutsk? Who will warn the Grand Duke? Listen. Since you cannot see, I am holding in my hand the Tsar's dispatch. Do you hear? The true courier of the Tsar is Ivan Nogareth. Michael. Nadia. 
Radio. I will cut your arms free. There. Now take my hand. Come. Use my eyes while you're asleep. I will lead you to Irkutsk. Nadia, where are we? Similarsko. We must rest here and I will find food. Oh, we've walked for 12 hours. I, I'm a little tired. My poor child. Yes, rest. This is an empty house. Sit down on the bench. There. Thank you. Nadia, are you there? Yes, I am close to you. I will not leave you, Michael. We must separate. Separate? But why? I cannot make myself an obstacle to your journey. Your father is waiting for you at Irkutsk. You must rejoin him. My father would curse me were I to abandon you now after all you have done for me. You should think only of your father. Michael, you have more need of me than my father. Do you... Do you mean to give up your journey to Irkutsk? Not while I live. But you no longer have the letter. Well, I shall manage without it, Nadia. They have treated me as a spy. I will act as a spy. I will go to Irkutsk and repeat all that I've seen. All that I've heard. I swear that I will. And one day, soon or late, I shall meet the traitor Ivan face to face. But I must arrive at Irkutsk before him. And yet you speak of our separating. Nadia, they've taken everything from me. I can't. I have some rubles still and my eyes. I can see for you, Michael, and I will lead you where you could not go alone. And how shall we go? On foot. And how shall we live? By begging. Let us begin. Wait here. I will go and procure food. Wait. <laughs> Food, Michael. Barley bread and mead. By begging? Yes. Well, it is food. Eat what you can for yourself first. No, you are my patient. Drink. Bread. Eat, Michael. Are you eating, Nadia? Yes, there is ample for both of us. If we should rest here for a few hours, will you have the strength to carry on, do you think, Nadia? Yes. My plan is to make the Krasnoy ask as quickly as we can. Once I've made myself known to the governor of the city, he will help me. Perhaps provide a vehicle to take us the rest of the way to Irkutsk. Oh, that would be wonderful. But first we must reach Krasnoy ask. We will. We will. Nadia, we've been walking for two hours. Oh. Nadia, you're tired. I've asked too much of you. I, I can go on, Michael. If only we could rest a little more often. I do not seem to be able to keep walking as quickly as I could at first. My feet, my silly little feet, they were not made for these roads. Listen, is that a horse walking? I hear nothing. I'm sure there's a horseman approaching. If they're Tatars, we must hide. Wait. I will go back to the turn in the road and see if there is anyone. Oh. I hear it now. There is someone coming. Who is it? Oh, a kabitka. A young man walking beside the horse. With a dog on the seat of the cart. Is he alone? Yes. Does he look... Friendly? Yes, I would say so. Wait here. Let him approach. Well, 
Where are you going in such a fashion? We're going to Irkutsk. To Irkutsk? Rather, Irkutsk is many miles distant. I know it. And you're going on foot? Yes. Well, but the young lady? My sister is also going to Irkutsk. Rather, your sister will never stand the journey. Friend, the Tatars have robbed us of everything and I have not a kopeck to offer you. But if you'll take my sister with you, I'll follow on foot. I'll run when necessary. I will not delay you. No, I will not. Sir, my brother is blind. Blind? The Tartars put out his eyes. Oh, the barbarians. Listen, I am going to Krasnoyarsk. Why shouldn't you and your sister ride with me? By squeezing a little, it'll hold three of us. Besides, Circo, my dog will not mind walking. But I don't go very quickly. My horse has a long way to go. I must save him as much as possible. Friend, what is your name? Nicholas Pikasov. It is a name I will never forget. Oh, climb in, brother. You can sit in the bottom of the cart with your sister. There's plenty of birch bark and barley straw for your comfort. Down, Circo. <coughs> there. You comfortable? Here. Yes. She's very pretty. <laughs> ah, they try to be strong. They are brave, but they're weak after all. Have you come very far? Very far. Those poor young people. It must have hurt very much when they burned out your eyes. It hurt. Did you not weep? I... Uh, I think I did. Oh, I should have wept too. To think that one would never again see the things one loved. But they can see you, and that's a consolation. Yes, perhaps. Tell me, friend Nicholas, have you never seen me before? You? No. No, never. The sound of your voice is not unknown to me. Yes. I know you, Nicholas Pigasov. I remember now. We have met before. Who is the friendly driver of the Kabitka? And where has Michael seen him before? So we leave Michael and Nadia at a time when their fortunes seem to have changed for the better. For surely, albeit slowly, they are being drawn in the direction of Irkutsk where Michael is determined to finish the business which began in the palace at Moscow. Will Nicholas Pigasov reveal himself as a true friend? Listen again when next we present Michael Strogoff, Courier of the Tsar. <laughs> <laughs>